Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem receivable 01. This one is gonna just put your knowledge of receivables and relatedly bad debts to the test. Let's take a look. All right, first up, a multiple choice. Which of the following are true about receivables? You have four options. Remember, it could be one, it could be more than one. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can identify what is true about receivables. And when you're ready, come on back and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So starting at the top, A, accounts receivable represents the amount of money a company expects to collect from its customers. This one is actually the trickiest one on here because this one is not true. What accounts receivable actually represents is the amount of money, and I'm going to go ahead and scratch this, the amount of money customers owe the company it doesn't actually represent what the company thinks the customers will actually pay. It only represents what the customers owe. All right, so now let's move to B. B, notes receivable represent oral debt agreements between two parties. This one is also not true because notes by definition are written debt agreements, not oral debt agreements. All right, how about C? Taxes, interest, rent, and various other types of collections from other parties can be recorded as receivables if those parties owe cash to the company. This one is true. Um, taxes, interest, rent, those just represent um, uh, some of many receivables that a company could put on its books, um, assuming someone else owes them something that is related to those items. So yes, you can have other receivables with these names um, if, if you are owed that money. And then how about D? The allowance for doubtful accounts represents the amount of money a company does not expect to collect from its customers. That one is also true. And revisiting part A, accounts receivable is the amount customers owe. The allowance is the amount you do not expect to collect, right? And therefore, when you net those two together, you get what's called the net realizable value of AR. And that is what you actually expect to collect from the customers. All right, next up, a true or false. The use of a receivable allowance account is required under U.S. GAAP. Is this true or false? Take a moment, think about it. When you're ready, come on back. I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So is the use of a receivable allowance account required under U.S. GAAP? Yes, it is. U.S. GAAP requires companies to use what is known the, as the allowance method of accounting. And under the allowance method, you do establish that allowance for doubtful accounts. Um, so this is a true statement. All right, last one. Understanding bad debt estimation. Which of the following is true about estimating bad debts under the allowance method? Four options. Again, it could be one, could be more than one. Take a moment, try it yourself. Come on back when you're ready and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So once again, starting at the top, um, estimating bad debts is the same as writing off a customer account. That is not true. You record a bad debt estimation before you ever know what account you're actually going to have to write off. You estimate based on historical trends, industry trends, whatever the case may be, um, to figure out what you think you won't collect. Writing off occurs when you actually know what you won't collect. All right, how about B? Estimating bad debts is required under U.S. GAAP. This relates to the true-false we just did. That is true. Setting up the allowance account is done as part of the bad debt estimation. The allowance account is required under U.S. GAAP. All right, how about C? Estimating bad debt sacrifices income statement accuracy for balance sheet accuracy. That is also true. When you think about the income statement, it's supposed to show the revenues earned and the costs incurred. But when you estimate a bad debt, the actual write-off hasn't happened yet. The cost hasn't truly been incurred because you don't actually know if it'll come true. And so you lose some of your income statement accuracy by estimating bad debts. However, the counter side to that is by estimating bad debts, you are able to create an allowance account on your balance sheet. So your balance sheet says, hey, we have AR that customers owe us less the allowance for doubtful accounts that we don't think we're going to get equals the net realizable value of our AR or what we think we're going to collect. 
Notice how much more informative that is from a balance sheet perspective than simply saying, here's what customers owe us. So C is also true. Um, how about D? Estimating bad debts reduces the total assets of the company. That is also true. When you estimate your bad debts, you typically record the journal entry, bad debt expense is your debit, allowance for doubtful accounts is your credit. That allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset. Contra assets reduce your total assets. Therefore, estimating bad debts does reduce the total assets of the company. So in this case, there were three of them that were true. All right, that's it for Practice Problem Receivable 01. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.